Hello, dear friends. You just heard an exercise by Janos Starker asking the cellist for 24 changes of positions within one minute. This is, of course, somewhat exaggerated. But the great teacher Starker has had a reason to bother us with an exercise like that. The size of our instrument and the music written for it constantly cause the need of changing positions. One could say playing the cello means permanent changing of positions. In our regular hand position we just cover a minor third. In the extended position we have a major third and some Beltran cellists can reach a fourth. But that's it. In the normal position we just have a minor third. If you play in the extended position we reach a major third. But if you want to go further we of course have to shift because of the size of our instrument. And the well-trained cellists look can stretch a fourth. But this is not recommendable because it makes you uncomfortable and you rather should play a small shift instead of stretch as far as that. Besides that, we have an additional reason for our permanent shifting. It is of musical nature. In many cases, it is advisable to shift in order to give a phrase more expression even if it would be possible to play it in one position, be it in one hand or be it by crossing strings. I'll show you. We all know the Swan by Saint-Saëns. It's one of our favorite pieces and the beginning is... You could play that in one position. Crossing strings but one position but nobody does it. It makes, doesn't make sense musically. Everybody plays and now a shift instead of crossing strings. This is our first example. Maybe you know the slow movement of the Rachmaninoff sonata. You could play that in one position. of Don Quixote, you could play that in two positions. And now it's possible, huh? but everybody of course plays. So, 
in many, many cases, uncountable cases actually, it makes more sense to shift instead of playing, even if it's possible, in one position. Let me mention two elementary principles at the beginning. The first one has to do with our language and is a somewhat paradox phenomenon. Usually we adjust our language to the pitches we play. That means if we go from a lower to a higher pitch, we call that going up. And vice versa, if we go from a higher to a lower pitch, we call that going down. In fact, the physical movement is exactly the opposite. That sounds very simple and quite obvious, but do not underestimate the impact of the idea of going up on your muscles. When you have a shift from a lower to a higher pitch, you have to work consciously against the automatic reaction of your body. Relax your shoulders, relax your arm, actually you can fall down to the higher position. So if you play never ever lift your shoulders and your arms while going up. Just the opposite. Relax and let the hand fall down to the higher position. Longer shift, same thing. This one. Just fall down to the E. You fall down to the B and the last one. One, fall down. Second time. Don't lift, just follow the physical nature of the movement. You need to concentrate only in this direction. If you go from a higher to a lower pitch, you can take full advantage of this mental trap. You don't need to think about it at all. Just follow the idea of going down. That will keep you as relaxed as necessary. The second basic principle is equally important, maybe more important. Every shift has to be executed by the arm. The hand and the fingers have nothing to do with the actual shift. They are moved by the arm to the new position without being involved. Just make sure that you are not pressing hard on the fingerboard, neither on the old note nor while shifting. Even if you have small, very small shifts, the smallest thinkable half step, move the arm a little bit. Don't try anything with your finger. sense. So, move your arm, even for bigger ones. Don't reach here with your left hand. Let the arm do the work. And if you can separate these two actions, the finger action and the arm action, you will see many, many, many passages become easier than before. There's a this passage from the Allemand in C major by Bach, you have finger action and one arm action. And if you know that, you can easily play that. The hand remains 
relaxed, the arm does the work of shifting. Now, let's get down to the real business after these preliminaries. Since we have our four fingers plus our beloved thumb, we have two types of connecting two notes in a shift. That doesn't sound logical. Anyway, I mean you can go from finger to finger or from finger to another finger, like one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, vice versa, four to four, four to three, four to two, four to one. I'll show you. If you go from finger to the same finger, you have only one possibility, you go from the finger to the same finger. That's easy. You just think of all the recommendations before. Don't press with your finger on the fingerboard, neither on the old note nor while shifting. You place the fingers a little bit on the right side of the string so that you are somehow hanging in the string and cannot you know, lose it while shifting. Inside the string the arm executes the actual shift. Now, from a finger to another finger, there you have again two possibilities. Either you go with the old finger to the new position and put the new finger down. Same thing, going down. I slide with the two. Put the one down. Here I slide with the one. Put the two down. Or one three. I slide with one. And put the three down one, once I'm there. Same thing. is you slide with the old finger until you reach the new position and then you put the new finger down. If you do it fast, then you almost don't hear it. This type of shift we call German shift. You slide with the old finger to the new position and then you put down the new playing finger without moving it anymore. The other version is you put down the new finger and slide with the new finger. into the new position we call French 
slide. It's a difference between those two types. If you want to play an unhearable shift, you rather would go for the German slide. <laughs> I mean, you can somehow cover it up, almost unhearable. But if you play a French slide, one three, you hear it in any case. So, if you want to play a hearable slide, depending on the musical context, of course, you have the you have the choice between a heavy German slide or a elegant French version. Now we have to talk about the bow. Since the bow's role while shifting cannot be estimated highly enough. Indeed it is the crucial factor and it depends on the bow whether we reach the new position easily or not. Again we have couple of possibilities. We start with slides in one bow, up bow or down bow. First of all we have to learn how the motions, the actions of both arms go together. If you go up on a down bow, you somehow move your body like that. Same thing backwards with up bow playing a shift downwardly. So if you go up with a up bow, it moves more or less together. And down, it moves together too. So here you could find some preferences and you could choose which bowing fits best to certain shifts or I mean as always it depends on the musical context but the versions are quite different physically for you as a player this is maybe some turning of your body and this is a pure arm activity. Then do not throw the bow. That means do not move it fast while shifting. Just the opposite. Play any bow speed on the old note and any bow speed on the new note but while shifting Play slow bow. Play slow bow. Please. shift between two bows you have to decide do you want to shift on the old bow or on the new bow. Actually most of all shifts are 
on the old bow. Only if you have a French slide, I explained it before. When you slide into the new note, you could do it on the new bow. Old bow, new bow. The German slides usually Usually you play on the old bow, now you shift and then play the new note with the new bow. Down, up or up, down, shift and on the new bow you are on the new note already there. beforehand on what bow, if the shift is between two bows, on what bow the shift has to happen. A last remark in this basic analysis of changing positions belongs to the general timing. In 99% of all shifting situations we take the time or slide from the old note. So if you count one, two, one, two, we have one, two. You see, I took the time from the one. One, I shifted on one. Text allows it. So don't go fast. One, two. Do it as slowly as possible and take the time from the old note. Consciously, you'll see many, many situations in which maybe you feel some panic while well, you have to go fast somewhere will disappear because you know exactly how to time the shift. You see, you can unravel the mystery of changing positions by considering and deciding many things beforehand. If you do so, it will give you a great relief when it comes to the actual shift. That is all for today. I admit it was a lot. But try out things and Step by step, you will be able to incorporate them into your playing. In the second chapter 
of shifting, I'll demonstrate a couple of famous shifts of the repertoire. You will talk about deciding which type of shift could be appropriate, about special timing, finger positioning and other specialties. At the very end I would like to offer you a helpful imagination. You all know ball pens. These pens with tiny balls in their tips. Just imagine your fingers would have balls instead of fingertips. With this imagination you can let your hand roll up and down the fingerboard and you will not press too hard either on sing single notes or while shifting. Just enjoy this imagination of rolling. Now practice thanks for your interest. See you soon again. Take care and so long.